Hello, Commanders, and welcome back to Elite Dangerous Return from Beagle Point. We are now in the second video of our trip on the way back to the bubble, <laughs> trying, to, trying to hopefully eventually save up enough money for that fleet carrier we've been dreaming of for a little while. If you're just joining the series, well, first of all, today's topic is going to be uh, living and dealing with doubt. Um, not exactly an exciting topic, but sometimes we just need to talk about things that are important like that. Um, but before we get into that, as always, I want to welcome those of you who are just joining the series and uh, get you guys up to speed on what it is that we're doing here. So we went uh, from the... Well, let's get up into the... Let's get moving here. Uh, we started way out over here, all the way across the galaxy. Starting in the bubble where Earth and all of human civilization is, we made our way through the center of the galaxy, visited Sagittarius A star, the supermassive black hole at the center of the galaxy, and then made our way all the way out here to Beagle Point, which is over in this area somewhere. Uh, and now we sold off all of our data and everything and we're on our way back to the bubble. We're hoping that we're going to be able to make enough money to uh, buy a fleet carrier at some point. Um, the purpose of this journey has been twofold. The, uh, one of them is obviously the fleet carrier that I mentioned, uh, but the other has been to increase our exobiology rank and hopefully get that up to the elite status. The, ult the ultimate goal um, of, well, I guess two playlists now. Uh, we had our first playlist, which was a journey across the galaxy, uh, trying to get... Uh, I mean, we initially started out just trying to get to uh, Sagittarius A-star, and then based on the viewership that I had at the time, everybody seemed, uh, seemed to be continually interested in the journey, so we decided to just continue on out to Beagle Point. And you guys seem to still be interested, so we're continuing to make these videos and uh, do our best to try to make them interesting. Uh, so as you can see, we do have a cycle of operations that we do. We pop the discovery scanner to see how many bodies are in the system. And then we'll go ahead and come to a stop. We will check out the, uh, oops, wrong button. Yeah, what am I looking for? We'll check out the full spectrum system scanner to see if there are any Earth-like worlds, water worlds, or ammonia worlds, as you can see down there in the bottom right. Uh, you can see that there are none in the system. However, I do have a uh, an arbitrary limit of, fifth, or limit of 15 bodies in a system. Uh, before we're going to stop and do what we're doing here, which is a full-on scan of the system looking for biological signatures. Um, that limit has no particular reason other than just we're trying to balance... Uh, you know, stopping to scan things versus actually making progress in our journey. If we stop and scan every system, it's going to take forever to get anywhere. So, you know, we're not trying to scan, you know, little little bitty systems, and we're also not trying to scan super crazy big systems because scanning, you know, 40 bodies, is, it, takes, it takes quite a while. And realistically, you don't have an increased chance of finding anything because it's the... it is the... Um, it's the configuration and variables of a system that def that define whether they're going to have life, not necessarily the number of bodies. So well, we're just trying to find a balance between, you know, getting where we're going versus actually making some money along the trip. So anyways, that's the uh, that's the intro for those of you who are just joining us now. Uh, the topic, like I said, for today's video is uh, doubt. <laughs> um, one of the things that I think we in modern culture really struggle with is just doing things that are unfamiliar and I'm gonna warn you now it's it's looking outside like it's about to rain and it could get pretty noisy I'm hoping my microphone will filter out that noise I do have software that's supposed to do noise reduction but it gets really loud in my trailer when I'm when it, when it rains and uh, you know it's kind of it, it could get really loud so I apologize there's no way for me to know in advance until I actually, uh, until we listen to the recording after it's all done. Not much I can do about it. Uh, we'll go ahead and stop and scan this system. There's only eight bodies, so that seems like a pretty decent thing to do. Um, it seems like here in modern culture, uh, we have been conditioned, well, I don't even know if that's necessarily modern culture. Oh, there we go. So we're looking for biological features up there in the top right. We're looking for at least two, though, until we get towards the end of an episode. And the reason for that is uh, a single biology planet is almost certainly only going to have some kind of bacteria. And those are almost never worth the time it takes to go fly over to a planet, scan it, take the time to go and land on the planet, scan the biology and do all that stuff. It's just it's just not worth the time. So I generally want to find at least two biological signatures which will generally ensure that we have something other than just a bacteria on the planet. All right, so we're going to go ahead and move on to the next one. Um, I mean, I guess humans, human beings in general are always trying to find safety and security. So I can't really say that our modern culture is doing that. I think we have a default setting that says we want to try to find the most reasonable and safe way to live our lives and hopefully find success and all of that kind of stuff. Uh, and the paradox to that is, is that 
the the true path to real success is the antith antipathy of that. It is the or antithesis of that. It is the it is going after things that are highly unlikely and can be and sometimes highly dangerous and you know with a very low probability of success. Um, those are the things that end up leading to real substantial success outside of just, you know, surviving and maybe making a pay. Wait, how many bodies were in the system? Ten? We'll go ahead and scan this one. Uh, outside of just, you know, barely making a living and, you know, getting to the point where you live and you die and that's it. <laughs> um, but especially in our modern culture, I think we have all been highly conditioned to really seek out the safest solution and what feels like the most stable option when it comes to trying to make a living. Um, as we've gotten more safe and secure as a modern nation with modern technology, ooh, there we go, that's what we're looking for. Uh, with modern, you saw biology, biology 5, so we're definitely, go, we're definitely gonna go and take a look at that planet. Um, Every generation has been every generation has been increasingly conditioned to really seek out options that feel safe to us, regardless of whether or not they actually are. And what I mean by that is, is that the vast majority of us are really unwilling to take risks um, because we feel like they're unnecessary. We'd rather take the safe, you know, full-time job that pays us pretty decently rather than going out and trying to build something of our own and you know that it makes sense from a what's i don't want it's not a lot it, it doesn't make sense logically because if you think about it it really doesn't but it makes sense from a human perspective because we all want to find the the option that gives us the highest chance f to get the result that we're looking for. And for the average person, you know, we're just looking to make enough of a living to have a safe place to stay, have food to eat, and, you know, maybe just a little bit extra to do some fun things in our life. And that's kind of what we're looking for. Uh, now, the problem with that is, is that there's no such thing as a, there's no such thing as a safe, uh, safe employment situation. And while it might seem like uh, going out and getting that full-time job is going to provide you with a more secure future, I think that history has shown us that, you know, there, there is no such thing as a secure future. Um, if the company that you're working for, no matter how big and successful, has some kind of event that happens that brings it down, your job could be on the chopping block just as quickly as, you know, somebody who started a business and it just didn't work out. I mean you could walk in one day and all of a sudden your job is just gone and now what are you going to do um we as a society have put up safe uh, safety rails in place in the form of like unemployment and some other social programs and things like that so you know it's always nice to have those things but at the end of the day uh you know if they're running properly those things don't last forever and eventually you're gonna be you're gonna be just as screwed as somebody who went off and tried to build something of, on their own so I think it's important for me to start out with remind, reminding or pointing that out to you guys, not just as, you know, making a point in a, that goes along with the point I'm trying to make, but also just to remind myself before I get into this topic that, you know, the choices that we make are the choices that we make because, you know, hold on, what am I trying to, we had five species here for Texa. So we're definitely going to be looking for the Cactoida first, and then we'll see if we can find anything else as we're going. Let's get the... Super cruise assist turned off, so we don't end up having any issues with that. And then as we approach the planet, I'll try to find something with a relatively high concentration. I also don't want to go into the dark area, so I think maybe maybe tw uh, at 12 o'clock up there, one of those bigger patches. I'd love to go straight down onto this one, but I don't know if I'm going to be able to angle myself properly to make that happen. We'll try it. Okay, so maybe if I come here... I can get enough of an angle that we won't... There we go. Okay. So I'm going to slow down here. Okay. So hopefully we can get down... Well, I don't know. I'm actually thinking we might want to go to this one here because there's a little relatively flat spot in this area there. So maybe come over to this one. Because it's a relatively... Yeah, here comes the rain. There's a, it's a relatively big patch of where it says Cactoid is going to be and then the rest of the stuff is going to be 
you know, mostly in the flat areas over there. So I think we're going to try to do this. Uh, let me know in the comments if you if the microphone is picking up the rain. It can get pretty loud. I try not to record when weather is like this, but it's supposed to be raining all day, and I don't want to miss a day of recording because the weather is not cooperating. So, like I said, I apologize in advance if it's uh, if it's getting picked up on the microphone. Uh, so, anyways, the like I said, the t what I'm trying to get to here is is that the we all have an illusion of security and safety. Oh, the train wasn't actually that bad. We all have an illusion of security and safety when we go after these uh, these employment jobs, and I'm not saying that employment jobs aren't something that you should go after. That's not that's not the point I'm trying to make. What I'm trying to get to is is that a lot of times the reason why we go after those kinds of jobs is invalid because they're not any safer really than you know some of the other things that we could be doing that we'd rather be doing. Um, and they don't necessarily have that much of a higher chance of success in bringing you the kind of success that you want than the other kinds of things you might want to go after for yourself. You know, self-employment of some kind. I think these are our cactoida that we're looking for. The question is, am I going to be able to land and actually grab these guys? Probably not. This terrain is a little bit weird. So, oh, nope, there was a spot. There was a spot if my thrusters would cooperate. Come on, get me back over here. Oh, come on. We had a spot. I saw it turn blue for like a fraction of a second. And that's going to take us too long to figure this out, I think. Let's, uh, let's try going a little bit further in this direction. If I could not crash, that would be nice. Now I gotta be a little bit careful because my shields are starting to go down. Oh yeah, here comes the rain. Yeah, the only problem with some of these species is is that they're they're located in places that are very difficult to land. So a lot of times I'll avoid Okay, dudes. Are my vertical thrusters working? I'm not going that fast. I'm not sure what's going on. I feel like my ship is not flying in a way that I'm used to. Maybe I'm just having some kind of mental thing going on right now, but I'm used to being able to be a little bit more aggressive with my flying than I seem to be able to right now. So I'm not, I'm not sure what the deal is with that. I think we're going to avoid the Cactoida because the terrain over there is just... Excuse me. It's just a little bit more are a little bit more rough and difficult to deal with than I want to mess with. So we'll head off in this direction and see if maybe we can find some of the other ones. I know I remember seeing Osseus and Frutexa and some other things as options. So let's get out of this rough area. And ideally, once we get over to... Oh, what's this? Okay, dude. I feel like... I feel like my ship is just flying in a very weird manner right now. Because normally I get a little bit more response from my thrusters than what I'm getting. I just, I, I'm, I just checked my pips and my, it's all in my engines right now, so I'm not sure... I'm not sure... I, my throttle's all... My throttle's all done. I, my ship is just not reacting in the way that I feel like it should be. I don't know... If, I don't know what the deal is. Normally, I'm able to skim over this stuff pretty well, and I'm just really struggling with it. Anyways, um, I know I keep getting distracted. This is the way it always goes. If you're new here, I, I, it takes me forever to get through the actual topic because I get distracted very easily. Um, so the, the topic of this is doubt, right? And the reason I bring that up is, is that I'm really, I've been focusing for the last year on trying to build this channel up into something that could hopefully become the thing that is my you know, primary career. At least for a while. I mean, obviously, you can't. You can't. No YouTube channel lasts forever. And even if I can grow this into something that you know pays the bills, it won't last forever. It's it's just not the way that this not the way that uh, this kind of stuff works. But if I could do it for a while and make a decent amount of money doing it, then maybe I could take that money and invest it into something, into another venture, or start another channel, or have a few channels going, or something like that. Um, but we all go through periods where. Even if things are kind of moving in the direction that you want them to, you, you still have that feeling of, this isn't going to work out. This, 
Okay, that was unreasonable. Um, this isn't going to work out. It's not going to go the way I want it to go. Um, you know, it's it, it's crazy to think that we could get to a point where, you know, this could actually be my full-time gig. No way. That's, that's, that's not possible. Um, and even though logically I know that I have a reasonable chance of making that happen, you can't get away from that feeling of, what am I doing? I, I need to go, I need to go back to what I know works. The problem is, is that the, what I know works is the stuff that I hate. I hate working for other people. I hate having a regular scheduled job. I hate not having the freedom to do what I want to do when I want to do it. I hate being, you know, tethered to a single location with no choice but to just be stuck there because that's where the, that's where the job is. Um, and the only thing that really, you know, outside of just the fact that I'm, I really appreciate that you guys enjoy the content, but, you know, outside of that, the only thing that really keeps me going on trying to do this YouTube thing is the fact that I really want to find a way to make, to make money, to make my own money, to make money that isn't dependent on someone else uh, paying me and, 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 you know, building up someone else's dream rather than finding a way to build a dream of my own. Because I think that all of us have that same... I don't know all of us do, but a lot of us have that feeling of, you know, we have our own dreams and we have our own things that we would like to build for ourselves. And while I don't mind helping someone else with their dream, it really sucks when you're building, when you're putting your all of your effort into building someone else's dream and the, your dream isn't going anywhere. And for I think for the vast majority of people who choose, well, a couple of different options there. I think for the vast majority of people who are in these employment situations, everybody has a dream of some kind. Um, and especially if you're very independent minded, you don't like working for someone else and helping them build up their thing while at the same time you're just, you know, you feel like you're stagnating. You feel like you're not getting anything done with your life because all of your efforts going into helping all of these other people get their get their thing off the ground like get, or, or just increase their wealth because, you know, they're paying you for your time and you're spending all of your time that you could be spending trying to build something for you, you know, increasing their wealth. And that's just, it kind of sucks. <laughs> um, so, you know, there, there's a lot of reasons why I really want to try to make this work. But at the same time, I don't think any of us is truly able of shrugging off the doubt that comes with doing something that society tells us is not normal. It's not really normal for the average person to, you know, try to walk away from a standard, supposedly safe and secure job to go try to build something on their own, which is weird because America in general was founded on those principles and somewhere along the way we lost it, myself included. I, like, even as I'm doing this, I'm only really doing my channel because circumstances have forced me into doing it. Uh, the job situation has not worked out the way that I wanted it to, and um, I had to find something to do with my time. Because if you sit around and you're not doing anything, um, you're you know, especially if you're the kind of person that can't sit around and just do nothing, you're gonna go insane after a while. You, you got to have something. I, and I'm the kind of person that I really need to feel like I'm progressing and progressing towards something that I find meaningful. And when I say that, I mean something that I find meaningful, not something that society finds meaningful or not something that a uh, an employer finds meaningful or not something that people in my family might find. I, I need to find it to be meaningful because I'm waiting for this to finish. Um, Cause if I don't, then it's all, it's all just work. And I hate work. Like, let me make sure I'm very clear on my definition of work. Work is something that you do that you have to do and you don't really want to do it. Um, there's a difference between um, there's a difference between being productive and just working. Um, I want to be very productive. I want to get a lot of things done. I want to be the kind of person who, you know, is always moving, always getting something, always getting something done, always, I don't know. I know I keep saying the same thing. I just, I, you, you get the idea. It's, I, I want to be, I want to be progressing towards a goal every day, all the time. And 
when it becomes it becomes work when it's something that I'm doing because now I don't really want to do it. I'm doing it because I feel like I'm just obligated to do it. And that's like, to me, that's the worst. I hate feeling obligated to do things. Now, obviously, we live in a world where you can't get away from that. You're, there's going to be a lot of things in your life where you're obligated to do it and you don't necessarily want to. Um, and I think that for most people, I think work is in that category. Like, if you want to live, you got to make money, you got to you got to work. And most of us can't um, just, you know, through the law of statistics, you, you, most of us just can't. Uh, put ourselves in a position where we can do something that we want to do. We are almost always put in a position where we do something that we have to do. Um, so, you know, for most of my life, I've always done what I had to do because that's, you know, it's just a situation that I was in. Uh, so I, I know I'm, I'm going around in circles and, and all of that because I'm having a hard time kind of getting to my, getting to a, a reasonable point, but I'm, I'm kind of trying, I guess I'm trying, kind of trying to expand on the idea that this YouTube thing that I'm doing right now, I'm not, I never would have done it if the circumstances hadn't forced me into it, basically. Um, I've always looked for a job. I've always looked for income because I've always been in a situation where I felt like I had to because, you know, I, I have things I, I have things that. I need to get done. I have bills to pay. I have people to support in my life. I have all of those things. And, you know, uh, that's just kind of the way that it works for most of us. And I'm in that same boat. Now, like I said, in the last couple of years, I've been in a position where work has been extremely difficult to come by, partially because the market has changed from what it used to be. Okay. Um, I think that part of my issue is just the fact that it, although I appreciate that they told me that I needed to turn it off, I definitely feel like I am getting a I feel like I'm getting a definite graphical lag because uh, the, I turned off the AMD FSR thingy here. It, I'm sure that it, I'm sure that's affecting our quality, but I'm noticing a lot more in the way of graphical lag having turned that off. So give it a chance to we'll give it a chance to look to reload all the terrain here and hopefully that'll go away okay let's land over here oh wrong key <laughs> um can i land sorry I'm trying to hurry up oh, there we go come on land there we go um I feel like the market has changed. Uh, I am an office. I am an office-related person by chain by trade. I've spent most of my life doing office work, and you know, the the kinds of jobs that I typically have done, especially since I left the Marine Corps, have just been office work, uh, sitting on sitting behind a computer and getting stuff done. Well, the market for that is changing, and it's changing very rapidly. Frutel Frutexa Metallicum in, in Emerald. We've definitely found Metallicum before. I don't remember what color we found the last time, but we definitely found that one, because I remember making a joke about the band. <laughs> um, so that's part of it. But then the other part of it is just as I've gotten older, um, my priorities have shifted, and what I'm looking for out of a job has changed, and I'm less willing to accept the kinds of jobs I don't really want to do. So part of it is my fault. Absolutely. I fully admit that. And I'm definitely willing to get over that. Uh, you know, I'm perfectly capable of getting over myself and doing what I have to do. Um, but even once I finally did get over that, because I, you know, I went through a period of I want remote work. I, I want to do something where I can, where I can work from home so that I can travel and do all the things that I want to do. And, you know, that. Uh, but eventually you have to give up on that stuff because, you know, what you're looking for isn't working out. And even when I was, even when I shifted back to looking for just more traditional, go into an office kind of work, it's been a lot harder to find that um, than it used to be. So that's when I finally got to the point where it's like, well, I'm I'm sending out like dozens of applications every day, a, a dozen plus applications every day, and I'm not even getting callbacks or anything. So. I got to do something. I can't just sit around here hoping that, you know, uh, something's going to work out. I got to start I got to start doing something that's hopefully going to build something for my future. And I have been playing around with my YouTube channel for a couple of years just off and on doing recordings here and there, not really, you know, not really paying much attention to it, just doing when I felt like it. 
And, you know, I was in this situation where I couldn't work anymore because we were living in a place where I couldn't work. And I couldn't find a remote job because I had to have a remote job based on where I was. So I just, I had to start, I, I was forced. I was forced to start, you know, going after my channel because it was really the only option I had left. And, uh, you know, it's it's growing and it's starting to get somewhere. All right, now I'm really frustrated because we got two out of the three for Texas that we need. And now we're not finding any. I would really like to find this last one. Did we finish off the Osseus? <laughs> I don't remember. I've already forgotten what we've been doing. Okay, where is the Frutexa that we were looking for? Because we just had a bunch, and now we've left whatever patch of... Oh, I think I just saw some. Or at least I saw something that looked like it. Maybe not. Hmm. Super frustrating when it gets like this. Uh, lots and lots of rocks, not a lot of what we're looking for. And I didn't, you know, I got, I've already gotten kind of turned around, so I don't even remember where the Frutexa was. We just need one more, and we'd be fine, but it just... Yeah, I feel like I feel like my flying is a, l a little bit... I, I say that as soon as I say that, I do something stupid. But I feel like the flying feels a little bit more natural now that I've turned the, uh, the, uh, the upscaling back on. And I'm sure that's making things a little bit smoother, and it's making it feel... Well, now we're getting a bunch of graphical lag. Okay, where's the rest of this Frutexa? This is super frustrating. This is why our ships need the same kind of radar available that the SRV does. Because, like, I should be able to... My scanner, the scanners on this ship should be vastly superior to the scanners on the SRV, and I shouldn't have to be flying around visually hunting for this stuff. I'm... Alright, well, anyways, we're running out of time, and I... I don't know when we're going to find this stuff, so I'm just going to say that, you know, every once in a while I go through these periods of doubt where I, I feel like, you know, I need to give up this YouTube thing and go find a job. Um, any job. But the reality is, is that if I do that, then what? I'm stuck back in the old endless cycle of everything that I hate. So what's my, what are my options? You know, I'm in a, I'm in a situation right now where... I'm financially able to support my dream because uh, pursue pursue I'm fin financially able to pursue my dream because I'm being supported by somebody who believes in it. So, you know, it's it's kind of hard for me to just walk away from that because of that, but also just because you know, what if I what if I actually do kind of make it? What if I actually do kind of get to the point where this becomes a thing I can do for real? And I just struggle with it because it's I watch all these other channels where they have far fewer videos and they seem they, they, they seem to be doing pretty much the same stuff that I'm doing, but somehow they have, and they've been around for less time. They have, you know, a lot less time. They have far fewer videos, yet they have hundreds of thousands of subscribers and it seems like they're making it just because their personality is much more appealing to people, I guess. Or maybe, maybe they have a better voice or maybe their presentation is... A little bit different or just any number of factors that just makes it so much easier for them to grow versus the very slow growth that I feel like I'm experiencing now again I I know that's I know that's a part partially jealousy and some things like that obviously we all we all get a little jealous about things but uh, you know it's just it's one of those things that makes me doubt that I can make it because I watch these other channels that are that seem to be doing a lot better than I am and don't really seem to have too much of a difference in format. It's mostly just they have a personality that people gravitate towards more. And unfortunately, in this business, that's kind of what makes you uh, that's kind of what makes you grow fast. Is uh, do people like your presentation a lot? Now, I, I I understand that a lot of you enjoy these videos, and I appreciate that. But uh, you know, 
it's still a little slightly discouraging to, to see that kind of stuff. So anyways, I don't mean this to be a complaint fest or anything like that. The, I want to, I just, when I, when I come up with these topics, it's mostly because I'm just trying to cover an idea and not necessarily whine to people about my situation. Um, whining never, number one, whining doesn't encourage people to want to help you because they just, that's just, that's just irritating and nobody wants to hear that crap. Uh, it irritates me when people whine at me and you know, that's, I, I try to make it so that these videos don't sound like I'm just whining about stuff. It's mostly just, you know, the, the Elite Dangerous isn't exactly the most interesting thing to watch when it's just the game. And I'm just trying to come up with something interesting to talk about. So I know sometimes it can come across as, you know, I'm, I'm bitching about my situation. That's not, that's not really what I'm trying to get done. It's more just trying to express an idea and using my situation to kind of illustrate it. So hopefully it comes off the right way to most of you. I know some of I know some people leave comments and they have really negative things to say about the, the topics that I bring up because they think I'm just complaining. And it's like, well, yeah, OK, I understand why you think that me personally, I don't think I'm complaining. I'm more just trying to cover an idea. So whatever about all of that, um, I know that if I keep at it, I can experience a certain amount of growth. The question that I have is how much growth is it going to be? And some people can make it and other people's never other people never will because you just don't have what you need to grow something that big. And I don't I'm still not sure yet where I fall in that category. If I can grow to where I have, you know, 100,000 plus subscribers. OK, hey, cool. That's great. That's that's something that I could I could live on for a while if I'm stuck in the, you know, less than 10,000 category and I never really grow much past that. Well, that's not really a sustainable model, is it? <laughs> so it just kind of depends on how things work out. And at this stage in my YouTube career, I don't know where that's going to be. And it just it creates a lot of doubt. And it makes me it makes me feel like sometimes I should I should give this up and go do something else. Um, and I have to force myself to just sit down and record every day when I feel like that because it passes and then you get back to the part where you're just enjoying it and having fun. And, you know, I, I enjoy doing this for the most part. There are days where I get up and I'm just like, Ugh, I don't feel like recording today. But, you know, you have to force yourself past that stuff because consistency is the key to anything in your life. And especially with something algorithm driven like YouTube. So anyways, enough of all of that. I just wanted to talk about an interesting topic. Uh, feel free to leave suggestions for other topics for things that you would like some perspective on. Um, I do try to, uh, I have a, philo a philosophical side to me and I like to talk about these kinds of things. So be sure to leave uh, suggestions for that. If you like the video, be sure to click the like button so the YouTube algorithm will know and send the video out to as many people as possible. If you're not subscribed, please consider doing so now so that the channel will grow and you will get a notification when, uh, or at least the, the new video will show up in your feed when it uh, when it comes out and you'll be able to watch it as soon as it becomes available. Channel members do get early access to all of my content in addition to additional benefits depending on which tier that you choose. So be sure to click that join button, check out the options available there and decide if any of those are right for you. If you're not interested in a membership, you can always leave YouTube's form of a tip with that thanks button. Direct contributions such as these are greatly appreciated and are a critical component to helping to turn this into a full-time gig. And I do make, uh, for those of you who have left a uh, contributions with that thanks button. I really do appreciate it. I try to make sure I let you know that I appreciate it by directly responding to your comment. So again, thank you very much for your time. I hope you guys have been having lots of fun on this journey. We still have a long way to go, so be sure to come back for the next one, and I'll see you then.